Good evening, YouTube. Good evening, good evening, and welcome to The Real McCoy, the movie podcast where we uh, talk about movies every single week, every single Saturday, apart from Saturday is where our lovely feller here is away from his uh, PC and and or whatever. Uh, (laughs) So if you're watching live, please like, share, and subscribe. If you're not watching live, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I hope you uh, feel lucky. Uh, what we're doing here in the real uh, in the real McCoy is we take a movie each week and we kind of cut it to bits, break it down, and give it to you in bite-sized chunks. I do do want you to every time we uh, announce the movie at the end of the podcast, go and watch that movie, and then come back next week and talk it over with us. Along the way, we have a few segments for you to. Uh, to have your uh, delectable little uh, nuggets of, uh, you know, break down the show and have a little, uh, you know, here and there kind of uh, take you out of movies or just discuss movies in a different light. So let's get started. Uh, I'm Mephisto and this is Oh My Feelings. Good evening, sir. How was your week? Good. How are yours? I'm I'm good. I uh, I know you enjoyed watching this again. I hope you watched it or, or ah, just out of memory cuz I wanted to do this by off memory. Then I had to do the the short short version and had literally left it running as I was doing the short shorts and like did the little notes, did a little this, did little that. Everything is here on this screen and here on this screen too. But uh yeah, I enjoy this very, very much. So I let's say, give a little bit of a I rundown. Will, I will not lie to you. I watched this movie three times this week. Nice. Nice. All right. So a little rundown. Hot Fuzz from 2007 is the movie for us today. Uh, it is directed by the great Edgar Wright, wrote by Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg. Simon Pegg. Stars Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, Nick Frost. and a few other uh, very well-known British actors. Mm. 
Um, Hot Fuzz is the second of the uh, Cornetto Trio. Cornetto. Or, yeah, originally the Cornetto Trio wasn't really called the Cornetto Trio. Correct. Someone just realized that every single movie had a, a Cornetto ice cream. I think it's after the second one. They realized after Hot Fuzz, they realized that that they ate they, a different Cornetto in Shaun of the Dead than they did in Hot yeah, Fuzz. and they and they did in Hot Fuzz. And when uh, at at World's End came out, it was kind of it was amalgamated into a trilogy. Um, well, Hot Fuzz, what is uh, what is your take? Just hot take summarized in three uh, four pieces. I, I would say. It is the UK's take on the American cop movie. That's what it really is. That's what Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg wanted it to be. Um, it is my favorite of the Cornetto trilogy. Uh, I think it's vastly underrated. Um, it was just a small caveat, too. It was filmed actually in Wright's hometown. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Is it? Yeah. I haven't checked. Is Sanford a real place, or is it just made up? It is not. It is actually in Wells in Somerset. Nice. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, <clears throat> what is the premise of this whole entire movie? Well, we have Nicholas, our titular hero. Uh, he is a very, very, very uh, accomplished police officer, mm -hmm. not a policeman. Uh, a, a police officer that uh, is he is way too good in his job so he gets transferred to a lovely little quiet town and when he gets to the quiet little town he uh, wreaks havoc not really but he uh, ha having he a hard does time his job correctly that's what yes. he does yes but <laughs> when he does his job correctly he kind of uh, acclimate he, he's having a hard time acclimating to the fact that uh, he comes from a, uh, like a big city mm -hmm. where you know a very limited amount of people. Suddenly, everybody knows everyone there. And it, you always get a, like a creepy vibe, in the, even at the start of the movie, where like very it, it, so. it's, so, it's sort mm -hmm. of like from his perspective, crime is everywhere around the corner. So every time there's a, like a move, the you get the the ramp up of the music, as if something happens, like a slasher movie or horror movie, and that kind of follows throughout the movie. But it it happens when everything is terribly quiet or mellow in the movie, and it happens when it's super actiony. All right. So uh, let's get started with uh, with the start. So. Uh, let's give it a, a quick snippets. All right. So we're not going to go through, uh, like I'm, I'm trying oh, every so single week. I'm trying to get this, this podcast to move a little bit quicker, know, but it's very, I very know. hard, especially when um, it's movies that we really, really like. This so, is, this is going to be a really hard one. I, I'm just going to do a real quick rundown of this. So it's basically okay. just a, a series of his accolades. The big, big, um, proponents, like the big things to, to get garner from this is, uh, the, the Santa that stabs him, you know who that is, right? No. That's Peter Jackson. The director? Yes. That's okay. Peter Jackson that stabs him in the hand. Oh, shit. Damn, yeah. I didn't know that. Really? <laughs> yep. Cool. And then, um, so then they have that little... Uh, but that's after, yeah, that's after Lord of the Rings. He was... Peter yeah. Jackson. He wasn't. He was Peter, Peter Jackson. Jackson. He was well, yeah, because, Peter well, Jackson. Because he was always friends with Edgar Wright. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Mm -hmm. So he's like the. It, I like the fact that Nicholas comes to the office where he's he gets summoned to the office. He gets called by a a. Uh, a I. I forget the actor's name but he is like a mega actor martin. today martin whatever his name is uh, so he's like well, the charge then they bring in the, all of these yeah these he, he bring, he's the, yeah he's the he's the sergeant then he yeah. gets the lieutenant which is the the head of the whatever office that's uh With another famous English yeah actor. he's a very very uh oh, i forgot his name steve they bring coogan in the they st Steve, Coogan, the yes. Steve, Steve Coogan, Coogan, who uh, was the director. Well, he was 
was the actor playing the director in Tropic Thunder. Never mind. Yes. Uh, and then, and then they bring they in the chief. the chief. The chief is Bill Nye. Yes, yeah. Bill Nye, who is, yeah. I think he's in every trilogy, in every movie. He was his, uh, he was Simon Pegg's uh, foster father, not foster father. He is, father. Um, his he was stepfather his father, his in stepfather Shaun in Shaun yeah. of the Dead. And I think mm -hmm. he was something in, uh, in uh, World's End, but I haven't seen World's that End, in a very long time. It's been a long time since I've seen the World's End, to be fair. Too. But yeah, if so. nobody knows that actor, if nobody sees any British films or anything, he is uh uh what's his face? Fish face, squid face. Come on, Davy Jones and uh, Davy Jones. Yes. He is Davy Jones, Jones yes. in 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 uh, Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean. Of the Caribbean. Yeah. But that's him. He's being the the chief inspector and nicholas is being uh, annoyed because he, the chief inspector says like we need to transfer you because you're doing you're, you're like too you're good doing, at your job yeah, yeah you're too good at and your he, job he says like well you can't just make disappear and he goes well i'm chief inspector yes i yes. can <laughs> yeah it's like I, and he turns he gets annoyed he turns around i you know, I've got my. I'm gonna go talk to the team. I'm gonna talk to the team. And he goes out of the office, <laughs> and they're like, "Good luck, Nicholas." And they got like these poppers and everything, and they're basically. He he knows that he yeah. he's got no chance. He's got zero chance. So, and he goes, he goes very briefly to talk to his uh his now ex girlfriend. Yes, that's is, what uh, that's where we're going right now. So he goes to his ex girlfriend, who is a CSI uh, lab tech. And do you know who she is portrayed by? I have not checked. No, that's Kate Blanchett. That's Kate Blanchett. Yes, it is. That's Kate Blanchett right there. I I refer to you, man. I I yeah. I mean, there, there are a lot of really famous just so people you know, in this movie, just in these tiny little bit parts. Just just so everybody knows, right? Um, when I set up the podcast, I have watched the thing. I'm very uh, meticulous in <laughs> getting every single component of the podcast ready for air, especially the short shorts. It's I am so bad with names and stuff unless it's drilled into my head, okay? Mm -hmm. I know who Kate Blanchett is. I know the movies she's made, blah, 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 blah. But I have not opened up the... the I've not opened up the IMDb to see all the list of the actors, all that stuff. Just remembering Simon, Simon Pegg's uh, fucking name I forgot last week. So just to, to remember yes, what's, going on, <laughs> what's going on in my head. So the, the, this whole scene is very, very short. So I'll just skip it by. He goes to his yeah. girlfriend, his ex-girlfriend, and she basically tells him, well, they want to get rid of you because you were married to your job. I got rid of you because you're married to your job. And that kind of gives us uh, who Nicholas is. Just gives us information. This whole scene is just giving us information. Has a little bit of jokey jokey where he call he says Bob and Bob is right there. His he, uh, I would never date Bob. Yeah, I'm yeah. Dating Dan. <laughs> Dan. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> exactly. And like this, it. The movie is filled with these kind of jokes where you're you're kind of in a dramatic kind of setting. Or a dramatic thing where he tells her, oh, I have to go, blah, blah, blah. She tells him, I already know, and all that stuff. So it just builds up his character, what his motives are, where he comes from, and all of that jazz. So we got a little bit of a montage. And this is where not really the writing is the key here. Part, like, part of the movie or part of the how great this movie is is the editing is the edgar wright style of editing every uh every transition has components of like everyday life but done in super speed so if yes. you're if you're like oh i, I just want to drink beer so you see uh, a real fast takes of uh, uh, fridge opening, beer taken, pop, uh, pop the thing, pour the bottle into the uh, into the cup, and everything it has like these sound effects of getting things that are you know the whoosh sound, 
Everything is uh, has the. Oh, I'm gonna. People are gonna suffer from this in the the house. So everything is rush, 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 rush. But we're, we're basically moving from one scene to the next scene, or we're moving from one place, like we're moving from the pub to the house. We're moving from this yep. to that, and everything is done very, very meticulously. So we have a very short move to the country scene, which is basically. Him standing in a railway, him on the ra- on the train, him on the different train, him standing in the railways. It's like st- standing in the station, and it's it's Sergeant so Angle? beautifully Angel? done. Yeah, this is uh, this is <laughs> yeah, this is oh god, this, and, is your, this is your new chief. Yeah, well, we just want you let let you know we have a cottage set up and ready for you. Uh, yeah. Angel, this is your chief coming back. Just let you know, this, the cod isn't ready. You're going to have to stay at the end. <laughs> and he's greeted with a very, very lovely woman who calls him a fascist. But no, she's doing no crossword. She's doing crossword, yes. Yeah, and he uh, immediately after a few sentences, he's like finishing the sentence with, oh, hag. Hag. Like, oh, uh, down mean, across. Mean lady down yeah, there. Mean like, lady oh, there. And, she, yeah. and she says, oh, God bless you. Yeah. I, I like and this that. movie is so superbly English. It was just like it is very, uh, very it's English. quintessentially English. Yeah. <laughs> and then we reach another plot point where Nicholas is going to the local pub just to have a little drink, and of course, he does not drink beer. And this changes midway through the movie. Yes. This changes midway midway through the movie. So he is drinking cranberry juice because it's good for you. It, it's whatever, good for the uh, good urination. For yeah. yes. he, he doesn't say that. They just, and I like that. They don't explain why. He's mm-hmm. just drinking cranberry juice because he's not drinking any beer. Well, that's the first time you, you get to meet also um, Nick Frost's character, Danny. Yes, yes in the pub. Uh, and Danny is just ordering pint of lager after lager and mary the the bartenders there uh is the one keeps seems like oh hello hello yeah right away and, love and yeah it's it's very it's, it's this movie is so, like like so small british town yeah. british yeah. like it's just, eh, yeah uh but what one thing that happens there is um the one line that is pervasive throughout the whole film is that mary brings it up yeah with her first conversation with nick simon peck's character I was like, oh, yeah, but it's all for the greater good. Yes, the greater good. It's all for the greater good. So Nicholas being Nicholas uh, realized that everybody's there or a lot of the patrons are underage. Underage. So he basically tells them off. He tells off the pub owners because the pub owner, the the greater good is uh, if the boys are drinking in the pub, they're not outside Outside. causing havoc right Mm -hmm. that's the greater good so it's very very important yeah at the very very end of the film and it makes way more sense it's like okay that makes way more sense (laughs) yeah exactly exactly so when uh when he tells them off everybody leaves and he basically stays there alone with nick frost and the the pub owner is so super salty he's like do you want another, another cranberry, cranberry juice? Like, juice? No, I'm That's good. Me. No, I'm good. <laughs> mother, oh, you mother. Yeah. Mother. <laughs> Along the way, and it comes back all the way at the end where the got the exposition. He reads the paper, and the paper gives you a little bit of information, but it doesn't zoom into the paper. It zooms no. into the paper later on, on when you've got the exposition. So yeah. we're gonna leave it for now, even though everybody's seen the movie, of yeah. course. And uh, we're moving forward. So everybody leaves. And, uh, of course, uh, he can't just leave them there. He has to uh, book them because he sees them later. No, he doesn't book them there yet. He goes to the fountain. Yeah, he he goes to the fountain and he kind of saves Nick Frost from being going drunk. He actually picks him up. To go arrest him to to take them to the station. No, Nick Frost almost runs him over. Yeah, because he ba- almost backs the car into him. So then he pulls him out and goes, 
Well, I have to take you to the station. Where's the station? <laughs> yeah. So on their way there, on the way he there, he picked he's... up the cadre of kids that he had thrown out of the bar. Yeah, because they're all like they were dressed. because they were drunk, uh, so Drunken, he picks yeah. them up as well because it's loitering or or, or publicly yeah. intoxicated. So he goes to the thing, and the sergeant gets him there, and the sergeant's like, "Do you really want to book?" All? Oh, first he tells like, Nick, "This is oh, a he lot can, of." He, he tells Nick Frost, "You can go. You can go to the like, cell. Yeah, he goes, uh, cell number four is open." Yeah, <laughs> yeah go ahead. I was like, okay, what about these? It's like, uh, these will take a lot, you know, a lot of process, like a lot of processing. processing my a lot pen of is almost done. I'm and good. Nicholas is like, no problem. It. And well, that is important too. The, the sergeant behind the counter, then we get to the, it's like, this is the nice twin. This is the nice twin. Of yes. The two. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, by the way, was, they're, they're not really twins. They're, oh yeah, I know, but they're just, just portrayed as twins in, in so, the film. So I don't know what the name of the actor is, but he is a very famous um, sitcom actor in the UK. He, I think, he also did a little bit of stand-up, but he's very well known as a sitcom actor. He was in a show that was running for a very, very long time. I've seen it. I've seen parts of it, of course. I haven't seen it all. I think it has. Um, eight eight seasons i think if i'm not mistaken that or he did two different ones back to back i don't back remember back. what the name yeah. of the the guy is but he is extremely his character in hot fuzz is his character in everywhere he plays sort of okay. the aloof kind of uh sarcastic dude right nobody tells me nothing <laughs> <laughs> so nicholas comes in to the station the day after of course he wasn't in uniform when he arrested everybody he comes in this morning he uh comes across the evil twin the curly haired guy so what do you want well yeah the inebriate in cell four what are you talking about <laughs> exactly so he comes into the cell there's nobody in the cell but he's greeted with Nick Frost in like, where to go? Where to go? <laughs> yeah. He pops up and was like, "Who are you looking for?" <laughs> yeah. And Nick's first was like, "You're a, you're a cop." Yeah. <laughs> he's like, "Um, yeah, yeah. I guess I am." <laughs> 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 and the chief in inspector comes oh you've met my boy and nicholas is like yeah. oh it's oh it's probably that he thinks it's that but it's probably it's I, I don't know i don't know if he thinks it's like favoritism or not he has a face where he realizes that oh it's probably favoritism that's oh no it's a nepotism the reason why he has a job but that's yeah. why he has gotten above constable at that point <laughs> and he gives them the grand tour after they uh they eat cake and nicholas is like why are you eating cake it's they're like, always eating cake or yeah. some sort of dessert the yeah. yeah, and they it, it's it's after the tour they discuss it there where they tell well the Nick Frost's character Danny, Danny owed everybody uh, a cake because of whatever indiscretion he did done. So and this he is owes his them payment. how many of these? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he takes them into the tour where they go and see the like the uh, the empty evidence room and and like the, the right gear that's, that's covered the in right gear that's covered rats. in cobwebs. <laughs> so everything it, it gives us the setting where it's a small little town. It's, it has a very minor police force. No, like at there's one point, zero. The last murder was the rest re recorded murder. Recorded murder was, was 20, twenty years, years ago. ago. Something yeah. like that. And uh, yeah, it's basically everything is quiet. And he takes him at the end after he introduces everybody, introduces well, him to Andrew and Andrew, of Andrew. course. Oh, the detectives. Why, yeah. why do they call them the Andes? Because they're yeah. both named Andrew. Andrew. Oh, we knew you were sharp. <laughs> yeah. then, like, Nick Frost turns the, like turns this way. And the, the this is a callback that comes back later when that waves yeah. him, hits him in the head and goes, ah, fuck off. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, he takes him to the uh, to the civil liaison room with oh, uh, from, the mem- NWA, from the NWA. From the NWA, different connotation in the states. <laughs> Ex- exactly. <laughs> it's the it's the neighborhood watch, watch association. association. Yes. yes, which comes uh, very, very uh, later on. It becomes very uh, a big part of what's happening in this little town. Mm-hmm. And of course, Nicholas is always suspicious, even when there's nothing to be suspicious of. At the moment, at this moment, there's literally nothing to be suspicious of. There's a few characters that approach a uh, Skinner, the the supermarket uh, boss approaches him while he was running because oh, he was yeah. a runner too. And I, he approaches him and he tells him like creepy no, shit. He, like, he was like, no, you, no, you have to, you have to arrest me. You have to arrest me. Yes. I, I'm a slasher. I'm a slasher, I slash I'm a slasher of high prices. <laughs> and I was like, Timothy That's Dalton. Most- oh, you brilliant motherfucker. It's oh, the most he's amazing American thing <laughs> ever in this in this movie. Yeah. Well, not, but it, one of the most American thing is slashing prices. You'll never hear yeah. anything of yeah. like slashing prices or killing the competition in the UK. Maybe yeah. now, but I I don't think you will hear. I don't it. know, but I think Tim uh, just uh, side Timothy there, Dalton. Like, I, think Timothy Dalton, I think this is one of his best roles of all time. He's amazing in this movie. Yeah, I, I really, really love him in this movie. So they finish off with everything. Mm-hmm. And of course, what you do with your mates from the police, you go to the pub, pub. even though it's the middle of the day. The day. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all drinking beer, and he's drinking, of course, cranberry juice. Cranberry juice. And they kind of get try to get to know each other there's a, that that moment where uh one of the andes drinks a beer and he has a mustache like, like a beer you have a mustache, mustache like you have a mustache. i'm aware I, yes i know <laughs> uh and they ask him about his thing and we've got the first interaction between danny and nicholas where uh danny kind of asks him what like what's you know you got stabbed how uh, like how was it? It's like it's it was the most, most single most painful experience of my entire life. And Danny so goes, of course, so what well, was course. the second? Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, what was the second? And we don't get an answer. And so it's the most crazy question you can ask yeah. after you've been told that. Well, that it was the uh, the, the formation of the, the idealization that Danny has of Nick. Because he yes. was this big bad hero cop who actually did shoot and kill someone. Exactly. They bring that up during that round table. And um, and yeah. we also get a little bit of a glimpse towards Danny, where Danny is sort of not only idealizing Nicholas, because he comes from a small town and all he has from the big town is the movie. So yeah, that's that's where yes. it comes from. Yeah, again, absolutely. You're correct. Absolutely. No frame of reference of anything outside of this small town. He has no concept of it. Exactly. And so we get yeah. we get so the the montage from here on out is mm-hmm. Danny with Nicholas being partnered up and uh and it's like Danny keeps asking Nicholas about what to do uh, like how d- did you shoot have you ever been did, in have a you high ever, speed yeah, pursuit have you ever, have you ever yeah, shot at anybody in a high p- high speed pursuit <laughs> Have you ever jumped and shot with two guns? Have you ever jumped and shot with one gun? So there are so many questions that it was like, Danny, this is just in the movies. There we don't actually do this. One one question that he asked that gets me when they're in the scene where um, he's given that kind of lecture to all of the, the kids that are in. Yeah, uh, the, the high school, school the high school or school. Where yeah. Danny is the only one who raises his hand, asks a question. And his question is, is it true that there's a certain part in the head that if you shoot it, it explodes? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, well, like, God damn, this movie's so good. <laughs> yeah, this movie is so good. So we get to, uh, yeah, I'm going to, uh, there we go. Now, I don't know if it's on purpose or not. There, it's sort of implied that that 
evening, uh, Nicholas goes to meet the actual uh, neighborhood watch. And the first picture you see, and it, it will be in the short shorts. Oh, yeah, because that's actually the what he's going into his hotel. That That's where the, the conference yeah. room area is. The conference is. room is, they're holding is yeah. The, yeah. the neighborhood watch there. That's kind mm-hmm. of his welcome to the community, which exactly. given the context that we have at the time, it makes perfect sense because they all seem like these small town kind of yokels for lack of a better term that are always just generally just ambivalently nice to everyone that they meet. Yeah. That's the, apart from the music that keeps you on the edge. Yes. If there wasn't any, if you didn't hear the, the sort of a slasher horror movie, the the slasher horror movie stuff, Mm -hmm. if you didn't hear that, you wouldn't even think about it. I mean, yeah. maybe Skinner talks a little bit funny and maybe a little bit creepy, but other than that, there's basically nothing. Now, I'm going to ask you this. This is white on black. Same way that the NWO logo, like the wrestling logo is. Do you think that is on purpose or not? I don't believe so. All right. Moving on, then. Well, do so, you think so? I mean, I didn't think so, but I know Simon Pegg is into wrestling or was, and I know Edgar Wright was, and I know Nick Frost is. is. So well, it very well, it very well could be. As a matter of fact, you know, that had never crossed my mind as a possibility, and that very well could be the case. This, this is something that. That comes up when uh, I came up last week and, and two weeks ago when we did Dread and Beetlejuice, where if I'm just watching stuff and just enjoying them, I mostly uh, don't think about everything. But when I watch critically for this, like for this podcast or to talk about it with people, yeah, it's sort of a few things pop up that I like it glances over when I watch it, but when you come to like, oh, we've got ooh these Easter eggs that I didn't notice in any other movie or something like that, kind of tells you something about who made the movie. Now, yeah. yes, it could be in chance, but who knows? If it was designed the same way, that would be a big tell. Yes, that would be a big tell. So the, the the whole neighborhood is basically talking about just getting back to tra- get, getting back on track. So whole neighborhood is basically talking about oh, there's like these human sculptures that are annoying us. We're trying to win. Uh, no, it's, it's village only of one. The, it's oh, the, the human the statue, the, the gold human statue. human statue, which but by you, the way has the biggest payoff at the end of the movie. Oh, it's, I know. It's, it's oh, it's it's fantastic. I know. But then I know. also like and all these these hoodlums around here. These yeah, the the hoodies, the the people with the hoods on, or these jugglers. They say and jugglers, no, and then and then they become crusty jugglers because because no they, because they, there'll be another in, influx of crusty jugglers, which is, yeah. I assume, has to be a kind of an epithet for a gypsy. I would assume. Given no, jugglers is sh- the one. Is the people who are in the street doing juggling? I know. I what know. Is crusty juggling. I don't know. I, I don't no know. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, of course, we got the first part where we see the cornetto because yeah. they they're on a stakeout of sorts. Uh, just they're just on the street, just looking around, and they. Uh, Danny goes to the shop, gets a cornetto. Nicholas doesn't want anything, of course. Nicholas is very reserved, but it keeps changing. It, the more he feels more comfortable with Danny, the more you see that change, where you do agree to get something off the shops, and then you do agree to sit down and have a beer, and it comes up a little bit later. I just well, want. Wanted to show you this because of the cor- the cornetto. Well, and also also the the relationship between them, how they both affect each other mutually, where Danny becomes more serious and Nick becomes more relaxed. So they get yes. that good that they reset good like uh, almost they're almost in simpatico at the end of the film. But we'll we'll get to that point. <laughs> so they both get both get called to uh, to Skinner. 
to 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 the supermarket to to have a visit or something like that and then we no they were just sitting in uh in the car and they're like well they're bored and then um well we can go to another shop and that's what uh danny says to nick and nick says well there's nothing really going on so what shop did you want to go to so they go to skinner's supermarket yeah so in the supermarket they kind of meet well they get to meet skinner in a on a more like environment he gets called into skinner's office basically office, yeah um by his, uh, his and, table dancer assistant yeah <laughs> and we've got more creepy interaction between skinner and nicholas and of course oh and that's when you get to see lurch for the first time yes lurch which and you know is who lurch was yes it's the hound dude it's the hound it's yeah. the hound yeah uh, by Yarp. the way, when I saw the Hound for the first time, I did not know. I d- did didn't make the connection. I did not. Yeah. Uh, the 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 funny part is is basically uh, the guy who plays the Hound. Again, I don't remember the name. Mm-hmm. Uh, he does a similar role to Hodor, where. He can only say one oh, thing. Yeah. He can only say yeah. a yarp. By the way, later on we learned that his mom and his sister, sister are the, we're actual the same, same person. person. Yeah, yeah, same person. Yes. But that, that's technically not true because he can say yarp and narp. Okay, but he, <laughs> you see what I get? So he here. can agree or disagree, and that is it. <laughs> the the whole point is that he. He is playing basically a Hodor character where he can say basically one thing, okay, two, but mo- nothing more than this. So he is the simpleton, yes. he is the brute, and it comes back later on. And yep. of course, uh, we see a we see Nicholas seeing uh, a chap stealing stuff, and of course he gives chase. I'm I'm pushing the the thing forward. Oh yeah, gonna, I know, I know. We're going to get to we're, we're going to get forever. to the segment. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, uh, the thing I wanted to touch upon uh, this is during that. Oh, we during, we forgot. Uh, there was that one thing where they got called in for a caper to find the swan. That yes, was the yes, he gets yeah. Nicholas gets Nicholas is sitting down, gets a call from P.I. Staker. Oh, it's Piss Taker. You you must be joking. Oh, Piss Taker. And- oh, you must be joking. And it shows up and it's actually um cut to uh, God, I can never remember his name. Stephen Wright? No, not Stephen Wright. Uh it's Stephen something. But he's like a very famous British actor, Dirt. comedian, mm-hmm. writer. He uh like he's he is really, really good, by the way. And he, yeah. all he does is like a very minor role. He just gives a little bit of, <laughs> It's just like, okay. well, slender neck. Yeah. Orange White. Bill with black spots. Yeah. Feathers. So, it's like, is there anything else you could tell me about it? It's a swan. <laughs> <laughs> Cut to back to the supermarket. Okay. Nicholas gives chase. And we have a mock up of train spotting. Did you notice that? Yes. Yeah. So the the perpetrator, the uh, the guy in the purple suit, does the um, Ewan McGregor part where he ba- basically narrowly gets missed by a moving car, but he gets away. And Nicholas does the random cop who doesn't get get a name in Train Spotting, where he skids across the. Uh, the, well, uh, the hood of the hazard car. Hood, hood. Yeah, so like, we get this. Slide, yeah. that just wanted to show yeah. this. And why? Why we did we discuss about the swan? Because during that chase, which is very elaborate, during that chase we get a little bit of a jokey jokey with the uh, Nicholas coming in. He basically you see his face like mothers, like it cuts away whole, like, and whole it's bunch, actual mothers, mothers coming in. Mother- Strollers. That's yeah. like uh, that. Then the, it gets it gets at one point, and there's the swan next to him. But he's yeah, like, and there's the swan God, exactly. God damn it! <laughs> so he has two duties: one, either to get the swan, or two, get the the thief. And he chooses yeah. to get the thief. And of course, there's a part where he wants to have a little shortcut, and and the shortcut is actually a, a callback to Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead, exactly. Yeah, uh, the gardens. 
And of course, Danny couldn't keep up, and he's, he he's, <laughs> he trips and falls through the first fence. It's <laughs> yeah. hilarious. It is the so practical hilarious. comedy in this is so just wow, yeah. It's it's, fi- it's physical comedy. It's uh, lingual comedy. So you 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 have a lot of play on words, mm-hmm. word like the mother. It, you're expected to say, mother like, motherfucker, but yeah. it stops because up to this point, there's no cursing in this. Mm-hmm. And when there is cursing, there's the curse box that you have to put money in, right? Mm-hmm. But of course, that is also th- something that gets changed during the movie, where you see way more curse words, way more violence, right? Uh, he gives Shay, takes the uh, takes the bloke, gets him to the station, and of course, Skinner does not press charges, which Nicholas is like, why wouldn't why you like to press you? charges? And Danny, of course, says, oh, it's uh, his mother's friend's yeah, sister's like, son or whatever. Why wouldn't you tell me that? He's like, well, you told me because before. When yeah, before he had, he had, had his, his head. head. I, was like, I couldn't see him. What, do I have eyes everywhere? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And we get another, uh, before we head off to our next segment, we have another point where um, Nicholas gets annoyed. And we cut to them sitting and just doing uh, speed, speed oh, duty. Oh yeah, traffic violation stuff. Yeah, traffic violation just, duty. Just, it's a speed trap, just, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and uh, and they get to uh, they get to talking. We see a little bit more of Danny's side of things. We see a little bit more of Nicholas' side of things. They get a, like they're talking about their peace lily and why why is he carrying the plant and why is he taking care of it? But no more than that. Like we get. A little bit more of Nicholas's side, a little bit more of Danny's side, of course. And suddenly, rushing car. And uh, we get to uh, see Mr. Blower, which... <sighs> yeah. Yeah, Mr. Blower... Would you please and- stop writing this down? <laughs> yes. Would and- you please stop writing this down? <laughs> now, I don't remember when, but... I think it's just after this. Uh, Nicholas tells Danny that he, the notebook is the most powerful tool. Yeah, in, Nick, in your right arsenal. When he's he's going back. He's like, "Did you see what I did there?" He goes, yeah. "Right here, right here is yeah. is the most uh, important piece of equipment you'll ever have. It saved my ass on on more exactly. occasions." Exactly. I- and of course, this movie is all about callbacks, so it calls back all the way at the end where Danny kind of puts. The notebook in okay. in Nicholas's uh, um, pocket, which allows Danny to pull to do, off whatever he pulls off at the end. Trick, yeah, yeah. To do the trick, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, of course, uh, I'm going to show it to you. So we've got Mr. So, yes, Blower this- trying to get trying to get like blow off the uh, the cop who's writing him a ticket. And uh, I can't cause... remember that actor's name, but that actress has been in so many the ac- comedies. The, the actress? The actress has, yes. yes. She's been in yes. so many. And, and I can by the never way, remember her name. I, I It's something, I think it's Lin- Anna Lynch or Anna Lunch. Something, Lunch. Her last name is Lunch. I think it's Anna or Annie, something like that. She has a very unique laugh which is in this movie but also in other things she did yes uh yes. oh it was um dinner for schmucks was there her other really really like a big prominent one that featured her laugh okay which if you haven't watched that that's a really really funny movie <laughs> i have not uh, so so basically the, the them the older actor with the who is more uh, basically you definitely tell that he's more affluent. He has a lot of money. And with this young kind of woman, he is a, he is a solicitor. He is a lawyer. Yes. Yes. Uh, But he does acting on the side Mm -hmm. because he wants the women basically. And she works at the uh, County, like uh, was it the the land? The the land. Yeah. Something with the land allocation office, something like that. Okay, so it, it all so, kinds of starts to paint a picture. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it gives it, it literally gives us a little bit of information. Yes, and let's let's go with the yeah. first segment. I'm I'm working on a sort of an intro, but I can't really 
do that with this system. So with Restream, yeah. <laughs> I can't really show you the intro. I'm working on it. It's not gotcha. done yet, All right. but it, it it will be there. I, I hope I can use it. All right. So our first segment of the night is uh, uh, the Nameless Poster. What it is, is I will show you 10 posters mm -hmm. that you and the crowd, once we have a crowd, uh, can guess what that means is. I'm going to show so you a poster. Anyway? <laughs> a, uh, <laughs> a poster from a movie that got his uh, the text written off mm -hmm. or a promotional uh, or a promotional poster that didn't have the uh, the text originally. Mm -hmm. And you will guess which from which movie it is. I made it very easy for you this time because I wanted to go fast. <sighs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so let me just do this and this, and we will start. Maverick. Maverick. Very underrated Mel Gibson movie, by the it's way. It's a good movie, yeah. Caprio. I don't know that one. This is Brad Pitt, Robert De Niro, De Niro, and Dustin Hoffman. This is Sleepers. Sleepers. I don't, I've never seen it. It's a good movie. Yeah. What Our old favorite. Loving. <laughs> what is this? It's going to be this easy. Movie, this movie bombed so hard. I don't think he did any movie until Hateful Eight. No, he did Death Proof. Okay, Death Proof. Uh, well, it's not Escape from L.A., which I thought that no, would no, be no, 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 no. There's too many eyes in this one. <sighs> I have absolutely no idea. You said you're going to be like, no, I've not seen this. And I'm Soldier. glad I haven't seen it. Soldier. Soldier. It is tremendously bad. Uh, stop or my mom will shoot. Yes. Love that movie. It bombed too. This one bombed as well. There's a theme here, by the way. Sleepers wow. didn't do well. Sleepers didn't do well, by the <laughs> way, as well. And n neither did Maverick. Jeez, it didn't Jesus. bomb, but it... Yeah. Samuel Jackson. No, this movie, I don't. This movie bombed so hard. I like it's outrageous bombs. Up. Like, no, I don't yeah. know them. Mm -mm. This is a long kiss. Good night. She night. plays oh. a like a homemaker, and we found out she's actual like a like a, a trained assassin by oh, the CIA God. or something like that. This didn't bomb, by the way. That's the Untouchables, right? The Untouchables. Yeah, that's Time Cop. Time cop. Time cop. <laughs> is that um, Total Recall? It is Total Recall. Yeah. Twins. See, I made it very easy for you this week. At the end, yes, yes. Is that is that Commando? No, it is not Commando. The only piece is. If I'll tell you the actors, you'll know exactly which movie this is. That's Jean Claude Van Damme and yes. So it wasn't Time Cop. It's not. No, it's not Time Cop. I know it's not Time. I'm just sorry. I'm just from out loud. all of Van Damme's movies, this is one of the more familiar, along with Time Cop. Came out two years after Time Cop, I think. Or two years before, don't remember. What it had a org? it had a very naked uh, one of the Arquette sisters, a very very naked one. That's the only reason why I, <laughs> I would watch this movie. I was right gonna now. say Rosanna. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that they is tend... that's that's I know that that's Dolph Lundgren in the background, yes. right? Yes. Of course. Which movie it is? Come on. I don't know it. TikTok, no. bitch. It is Universal Soldier. Universal that Soldier. Is, okay. uh, yeah. yeah. I'm not up on my old like Jean-Claude Van Damme B movies anymore. You know, <laughs> you know for a fact that there is someone 
that will watch this in about seven months that is screaming and, and their head fucking, off. Yeah, it's also be <laughs> fucking furious. It's like, what do you say? <laughs> Universal Soldier was a national treasure. What are you talking about? No, it wasn't. All right, it didn't bomb, but it uh, it made it, it was actually one of the more successful Van Damme movies, I think. Yeah. Uh, oh, did you see it, his most recent one? Side note. Nope. The one that's kind of a, a parody. A nope. documentary. No, nope. it's actually really, really, really good. Like, <laughs> as odd as that sounds, it's actually really good. And there, he actually has pathos because him crying on camera, he's actually talking about the downfall of his own life as this character. Like, it's it's really sad, but it's really a good movie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and then he I... has a whole bunch of fight scenes in it too. <laughs> obviously <laughs> all right so so the whole thing is uh nicholas we're getting back to uh mr blower so uh nicholas writes him down for a ticket gets back to the station finish uh, finishes his work day and of course the sergeant t- s- tell him look we've got two tickets for you uh hey, this guy gave it to you we, we can't uh, accept a gift yeah. from someone we've rebuked so he he, then he uh, his it's, chief comes out and goes, "Hey, we want you to uh, to represent, to represent us." us. And you're and like, show. oh, and there's a ticket for Danny. And Danny's yeah. like, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> and they're sitting down. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna get try and give you their faces as they're watching the absolute shit show. So the and I love the fact that it, this is not Romeo and Juliet. This is yes. Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, that terrible film adaptation from uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes. Danes. So they're that is sitting being there, re adapt, re like it's a it's an adaptation of an adaptation back into a play. It's terrible. It's terrible, and you can see, you can see the one guy's asleep, other one's just like uh, it's. <laughs> Simon Pegg's face is kind of sh- tells it Pegg's all. Like Simon face is fucking incredible, and the uh, the vicar is like teetering on laughter. I don't know. Now, in, the, in the way that in the way that that guy has to be laughter, or maybe maybe he's just kind of you know doing a little now something this is, else on the side. I don't part. I don't know the name of this actor, the vicar, but he's like yeah. very well known British actor. I mean, almost every actor or actress in this who is British, is very well known in other things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially the, the like, the older, like, all, all of the um, NWA, they're all very well-known actors and actresses. I'm sorry for the scoff there. It's just funny that this... Yeah. <laughs> you Saf says, Saf said he forgot we were live, so he's yeah. here. He just missed, <laughs> he just missed the good segment. So the posters, but <laughs> yeah. So everybody goes after the show's over. After everybody's horrified, uh, they go to the back, and we've got a little bit of interaction between uh, Mr. Blower, Skinner, Danny, Nicholas. It's all mixed up, and it's super creepy. Uh, and of course, because uh, Skinner Skinner um, confronts the actress and tells her, "Like, well, yeah." You were at you were at the land registration. If I were to bash your head in, who knows what secrets would spill out? Exactly. So <laughs> the the first sign of the, we get the first sign of trouble because Nicholas and Danny kind of leave and uh, talk about something else, and we see a picture in the back, and it kind of yeah. zooms in to the killer. So we know we got we got shit going down. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have some shit going down. Uh, it's gonna go. Uh, it's gonna go south really fast. Now this is where the movie really starts to pick up, and we're at like the yeah. half an hour mark. It really oh no, picks up. no, we're almost like forty five minutes into the film. Yeah, we're half an hour in. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I, oh, I thought. I'm sorry, I'm thinking of the next kill. Never mind. Moving on. No. All right. So. Uh, Nicholas gets called in. He he was asleep. He's like being called like what decaffeinated? What 
decaffeinated yes caffeinated. decapitation yes <laughs> they, and they don't know that word there <laughs> yeah exactly so it gets to the point and the sort of the other police officer is there and is like so uh nicholas what what do we do so, well, so, so he, he goes so what do you think nicholas and then yeah. he gives them the whole story like well what you have to do we have to segment it off yeah we have, we to, have to, to do this 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 traffic and everything and he goes well do what he said <laughs> yeah and of course we get like like i said before we get an edgar wright transitional where it goes through the the tape and then the, the cones and everything yeah. it's like real fast every, smash every cuts fast smash cuts and we're moving on to the next part so mr blower and his uh and his main squeeze or his uh lover get decapitated yeah they get decapitated while driving the car that's what it's alleged as. allegedly yes. and the other oh, one it's that, not a, and it's not an accident it's a collision remember it's a collision yes because accident yes. implies that no one was at fault yes mm. yes <laughs> and nicholas is being annoyed because he goes to the end i'm of course pushing this uh, uh he goes to well the i would Andes. say the only the only other part that's important in that scene is the first when skinner when he when skinner yes. drives up because yes. he goes he goes Oh well, it's a shame about um, Mr. Blower and I cannot remember her name now. Uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> well, how did you know that it was two bodies, and how do you know who died? Yeah, like, um, yeah. Well, it's a small town. We all find out news. Yeah, we all fast. find out really fast. And so, did you notice all this the stuff, like giant red herring that's supposed to point at Skinner as the person as the main yeah stuff. as the yeah. main villain yeah. so um did you notice the he had a very specific music playing yes he and, he, and he has and every single time that he's in a scene a post kill yes. he is yes yeah he, he has a specific music his I, music is very apropos <laughs> exactly so uh nicholas goes to the andes and the andes is like it's an accident. What do you want? And he okay. says, "Well, like, what about mark? the skid marks?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're and they're both yeah, because skid mark is a line of shit in your underwear. Right. If right. you uh, so yeah. you, you'd think if he was losing control of the car, he would have tried to hit the brakes. Right? There would yeah. have been some skid marks, and they both kind of have that one temporary moment, that, that one like sober moment of realization, like maybe but no nah, it was just an accident yeah exactly these things happen it, all the time it it keeps building up his frustration yeah and is like his police chief is like uh, it's just you know it's just an accident just yeah. relax it's a small town we haven't had anything here and just relax there's no crime here just do something else right uh and he tells him to go and uh to go and deal with this this farmer right who is uh oh yeah fuck i forgot about this movie uh, I for, sorry i forgot about the scene it <laughs> it really the and this scene the three layers of translation like this oh, inter okay. and this interaction kind of sets up the end of the movie uh mm -hmm. sorry one of the ends of the movie because the movie has like an ending and then another ending no. and another ending so yeah. when you think this movie ended it's like oh no it we've got no it didn't got yeah. another five minutes yeah. we're gonna stretch it out a little bit longer so yeah. uh he goes out the farmer has a gun he i'm shortening this of course uh he has a gun. Like, do you have a, well, a you, license for this his hedges and then they they basically like well the thing about that is there's that three lines of communication of the translation in between because that's the funny bit about this because yes, because the they brought the one guy who barely speaks gibberish that only danny can understand to understand the other guy who speaks absolute utter gibberish that only yeah. the one guy who barely speaks gibberish could understand <laughs> now the actor they're using here was um let me see if i can give it this one yeah this old actor. I'm, I'm going to stay on this. Uh, he was um, the groundskeeper in Hogwarts. Mm -hmm. uh, don't remember the name right now. He's been in countless movies. He, he's yes, but he was. He's always the this grumpy character, mm -hmm. but he was also uh, in Game of Thrones. He was uh, um, Frey. 
He was the he head was Walder Frey, Frey guy. Yes. He was Walder he was Frey. Walder Frey. Mm-hmm. And since then, I cannot have him on screen and not wanting to kill this guy. Kill him? <laughs> yeah. He is doing a very fine job. Now, in this one, he's like, it's a comedian job. It's like, I have, like, yeah. he, he, he um, like, well, Nicholas, is, <laughs> Nicholas is asking him. I hope him, you have a do license have a, for that. Like, for uh, this I, one, I, I do. do. For this one. What do you mean for this one? And he brings him there, and we've got Danny screaming us like by the power of Gray Skull. Gray Skull. Like, <laughs> what? The fuck? I love how it first opens up. There's a partisan pole arm that they first pan out to. A medieval yeah. fucking pole arm. It's like, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> and there's like then there's the cadre of weapons. The guy did weapon wheel there. Yeah, it's a scythe wheel, and then they're like, "Oh yeah." Then he also has uh, an inert sea mine. Yeah, and he like he gives it, it gives it a tap. <laughs> we can ah, hear it. It's just junk. <laughs> yeah, and it, we hear the like it the inner ticking. clock working, and they just bolt, and but nothing happens. happens. And they and he tells you, "See, I told you, it's deactivated, all... de- deactivated." Dang! <laughs> Even Danny's kicking it, the, kicking it outside the field. <laughs> yeah. So we go back to the evidence room who which was completely empty and now it's filled with Shock guns full. and everything is tagged, written, the handguns are in a plastic bag, everything is in order. It goes with uh it goes with everything that is that is Nicholas, right? Yeah. Uh oh Sorry, sorry. All right, I stopped it. Um, so, next order of business is, of course, uh, Danny and Nicholas was like ending it, ending their shift again. Mm-hmm. Again, it was like, uh, well, what so do you want to do, do now? Like, I don't know, like, pub, the pub, and I like the fact that Danny's there and he's doing the like the axe effect. He's he just, like he has he the the little the little thing, and he does like this guy. I don't know the pub. And Nicholas, it, it basically it's the first time he actually acquiesced to uh, acquiesce, yes. acquiesce to yeah. Danny's. I like that word to Danny's. Uh, um, like, uh, he, <clears throat> let me say this: throughout up to this point, Danny suggests the pub every single time, and Nicholas is like, "Nah, I don't want to." Yeah. Now he says yes, and this is where, like I said, everything uh, from the murder. Everything kind of starts shift towards first of all being more fast pace and a little bit more uh towards Danny's changing into Nicholas and Nicholas is changing into Danny. Not right. really, but they're sort of amalgamating said, they're both their uh, characters. To- bring the the harder edges off of each other and bring some kind of uh, again like syncopation together like yeah. they're trying to work in simpatico from here on out yeah and this is where this is where nicholas kind of lets go and this is the first b oh and there's a nice little interaction that you can literally forget i totally forgot from this interaction mm-hmm. he says no to the cranberry juice and he asks for so wine like, he's like and, what's a, what is your wine selection well we have red or white I'll I'll have a I'll lager. take I'll have a lager. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, yeah. <laughs> so they get a little bit slushed, and they see the um the local developer. I think he was no he was a a, a refrigerator magnate. Oddly enough, that's like he sold refrigerators. Like that yeah, was his big he, thing. he's the titular rich guy in the yeah. village yeah. that but he was. A, but he was a massive like, mount, massive mansion that everyone hates. Yeah. Like he was though he was best friends with the actor and act, actress who died before the, yes. the lawyer and then the, the lands register. Yeah, but they um, kind of when when Nicholas kind of gets his theory going, uh, the I think it's the Andrews t- told him, well, Mister Blau was basically everybody's lawyer in this town because he was yeah. the only lawyer. Yeah, so it's um, but th- anyway, so uh, that guy gets he's a little bit way too off of his rocker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in fact, the ch- the chief bumps into Nicholas when he's bringing back two loggers for him and Danny, and he goes, "Oh, 
I think you someone may have had too much. And he goes, well, not you, him. And he's sitting yeah. in the corner and he's pissing all over the machine. Exactly. That's what I wanted to see. <laughs> it's like, it's not you that's drunk. That's super drunk. It's that guy. And now, this, this obviously this, this actually has one of my favorite little side jokes in the whole movie meth. And I, I think you already know what it is. I know what it is. I know what They're it is. carrying him home. Yeah. On their shoulders. Granted the man's what I would say, maybe he's about four five foot, foot nine. Four. Yeah. Uh, it, I would he's say he's very short. He's very, he's short. very, very short. But they have him basically over his shoulders. So his feet are dangling in between them. Exactly. And Danny looks over it and goes, <laughs> see, I told you I'd get you a little drunk. <laughs> and, but then he explains oh, this is so it. Good. No, he explains yeah. the know, joke. Yeah, See, because he's little. Because he's little. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I like that part. So they take him home. They sit him down. But we see a we see trouble brewing. Right. Uh and Nicholas and Danny go to Danny's house, right? They go to Danny's they house. Have that, because- they, they have that post like second or third date conversation. We're like, uh, hey, do you want to come in for some coffee? Or- yeah, do you want to come in for some, some coffee? Tea? No, well, I don't drink any coffee past noon. Or I don't drink any caffeine. How about a beer? No, I guess I can come in for a beer. <laughs> Cut to Edgar Wright transition. We go to fucking the uh, rich guy's house, right? And he pulls, and he see pulls the grill shout, pops it open, and he's yeah. drinking, and he's pissing all over his yeah. Um, yeah. toilet. He turns around <laughs> and gets cracked in the skull. Yeah. <laughs> and then he's in his kitchen, unconscious, with his yeah. he's bleeding. And, and, of uh, cor- and of course, there's a transition back to Danny and Nicholas as the killer create that, like, basically does breakfast. Like yeah, like a, it's a, like a clash of like English and it turns product, on yeah. it turn he turns on the gas so we know it's gonna it's gonna burn out Blow right mm-hmm. uh, and of course Danny and Nicholas are sitting down and, uh, and Nicholas says that he hasn't watched Point Break and and that's one of Danny's favorite movies one of the two favorite movies which well, this is, is where Point they Break have more and of that Die really, Hard like, little tête-à-tête there about the 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 Lily and how he explain he tells. Yeah. Danny about how like well you know um, our relationship ended because I took my job too seriously and I could never turn myself off and um, uh, Danny tells him like well you know I just kind of fell into this because my dad did it and I kind of always wanted to be a hero in a way and yeah. that's what I wanted so he, he, he tells him you need to shut off yeah. and he puts on he puts on the movie of course we're going back and forth from the killer <laughs> He, watches, he, he walks in there, he picks up Point Break and Bad Boys 2, and he goes, so which one? He goes, yeah. I, I don't know. He goes, no, I mean, no, which, which one one's watch? first? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they watch Point Break first, and the Keanu scene where he shoots in the air. Ah! Oh, no. that, that's the explosion hold. Yeah. But we go again. We go back and forth, back and forth. Doesn't, and that's, doesn't... that's a call. That's a callback from when they were in the car, where he goes, "Have you ever shot a gun in the air?" And went, "Ah!" And he goes, "No, I've never shot a gun in the air." And went, "Ah!" <laughs> yeah. This is the part. They're basically watching a movie within the movie, uh, and uh, we get the scene. And of course, they they kind of talk about it a little bit. I have a fun right. point about this, but we'll bring it up at the end. By the way, Point Break was a bomb movie, and it oh, yeah. nearly killed Keanu Reeves' career. The next movie after that, you know what? Which one it is? Oh, Speed. 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 Which Speed. actually was, a, which actually they thought was going to be a bomb yeah. originally. But yeah. actually, it was a big hit, and it speed, actually launched Sandra Bullock's career too. It launches Sandra Bullock's career. Mm-hmm. Uh, then he, she did. She went off to do um, uh, Demolition Man, which we will have in a few weeks. And uh, did all like the miscongenialities and Keanu, no, that yeah. came uh, after the two thousands. But uh, Keanu kind of went off and do a lot of rom coms, and then 
the Matrix. Well, so, the, no, didn't he do Johnny Mnemonic was in the mid 90s, wasn't it? Yes, he didn't. Johnny Mnemonic after Speed that bombed that yeah. nearly killed his career, even though Again. I think I think in retrospect was a fantastic movie and could yeah, have had, it actually it was very it was panned for the wrong reasons. It was a fantastic movie uh, and fucking it just bombed because it has it had a little bit of issues, mainly iced tea, but never mind. And the main villain, the main villain mm-hmm. was crap. The main villain was yeah, off. That's true. That's true. And um, but laser uh, after that, never mind. Uh, so <laughs> it's we have uh, Keanu going shooting in the air. And we have the explosion, of course, to go along with it, because Edgar Wright loves to do this, to give you one thing and then cut to another thing that actually connects to that thing, then going back. Yeah. So point break I, I would, ends. I would say he I would say Edgar Wright is the the master of the comedic juxtaposition. Yeah. 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 And uh of course. They watch Bad Boys 2 and they wake up to, oh, there was another the call. accident. Yeah. Another yeah. accident. And we get this. What's important is it was the, it was the scene where Martin Lawrence goes, shit's about to get real. And then yeah, the phone the rings. Is about to get real. <laughs> so everything, it, it, everything is tied. The editing, the, the direction is so fucking good. It's in this super, movie. It, it, it's it also makes super the tight movie, too. It's very tight. It's yeah. like there's no... There's no filler. The, like you would think the the uh the scene where they watch the movie is a filler. No. No. The, it's, everything it's like- has a payoff. Everything yeah. has a payoff or everything is a vehicle to the next scene. Mm-hmm. Everything. Everything. And it's everything. also like there's no uh linguidity in it. It's all rapid fire. Yeah. Everything yeah. about it it just moves at a pace. And it's a 2-hour movie, so it it moves. Yeah, exactly. Now, like we said, an hour and a half is sort of a tight movie, but this one had a lot of stuff, and mainly because of the ending, because the ending subverts your ex- expectation. You would think 100%. it actually ends, right? You think it actually ends, but no, we have another scene. And then you think it ends, yeah. no, we have another scene, mm-hmm. uh, and so on and so forth. So, uh, Andrew's kind of they have this scene I, I like where they literally like <laughs> they they said oh the last people who who've seen it or who talked to him are you and then they move off and they come back, they back move off. and they move off and come back in yeah. that that's like my favorite like put together a uh, put together stuff and uh, good evening Bex good evening all right next hey Bex yep uh, we have. So Nicholas is being a douche. He's being annoyed. And of mm-hmm. course, the chief inspector kind of, he tries to like tone down, tone down. We've got a mission for you. Don't worry. Go take, go be a, a, a like a security duty in, in a carnival we have. Yeah. And of course, everybody's yeah. there dressed <laughs> as a carnival and, of course. Oh my god, Nick Frost's little tiny cowboy hat is the most adorable fucking thing I've seen in forever. Oh my god, it's so cute! <laughs> I got you, babe. I got you. I know exactly what you want. Now, I, I, there's a little interaction. You get a little bit more information. You get to, uh, uh, of course, to get to talk to the reporter again, which comes a little bit more apparent later. But we have the interaction of a lifetime. And this is like Edgar Wright to a T mm-hmm. we've said it. We've said it here in this podcast. We've said it and I'm going to keep going. So one of the things that came into play and I'm just going to get it there, right there. So Danny, Danny wants uh, Nicholas to win him a teddy bear as if they are a couple, right? So we had that third date scene where you go out for coffee. We continue yeah. this with this scene where I want you, we were in the carnival, right? I want you to get me a teddy bear. But well, it's also, you know how I it, feel about firearms. It's like, but come on, just show me. Come on. Yeah. All right. So the thing is, you have to. It's like an air gun, so you have to 
clip the uh the rifle and put in like the little pellets it's not really like a b like an american bb gun where you load it up like a shotgun oh yeah i know well this, this like, it's an american carnival like i we i am well versed in this <laughs> yes i've have you shot one of these guns yeah before yeah, yeah i've shot one of these guns yeah. at like a, a very private setting not in a carnival um they're very fun to shoot at and they the pellets hurt like a motherfucker by the way uh don't ask me why i know i wasn't i, I wasn't, wonder how you know let's, let's just say i wasn't on the business end of this <laughs> never mind safety first kids right so he yep. literally has the transition is he as soon as he opens it as soon as he opens it it's like bang 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 you see every little target fall off mm -hmm. and and he gives it to danny and danny's like Oh, and he literally he's such a klutz he shoots another one into the uh into the proponent right who later on get shoots in the foot if you notice because it, it, was, it was the doctor is the, it doctor. Was the doctor exactly the, he's the same line later that he is here he goes well he's a doctor he'll yeah. be fine He'll be fine, he'll it right? <laughs> it, it's so it, the interaction is so fucking good. So like, yeah, <laughs> if you can shoot all five targets down, you get the cuddly monkey. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the reporter uh, talks. His name is also oddly enough Tim Messenger. Yeah, Tim Messenger. Tim Messenger kind of talks to Nicholas, tells him, "Look, there's a problem with this town. This town is not as." As it seems, meet me at three behind the, the cathedral. And of course, little did we know, Nicholas gets called to be the, because he's new, he gets to call the like winners of the lottery or something like that. They remember? But uh, yeah. they, uh, one little small caveat right before he goes on stage, he does see Tim, before Tim comes and talks to him, talking yeah. to the flower shop owner. Yes. But it's when you that see pays it, off later. Yeah, when you see it for the first, when you see it like in the middle of the movie, even if you watch it critically, you, it's not really highlighted. He sees him from yeah. afar. Mm -hmm. He sees him from afar, and of course, Tim Messenger comes up even earlier in the movie where he takes him the picture in the in the school and he gives him his first report. Oh, look, it's Sergeant Angle, and he like he does less like a misprint, which is something that the whole town is being annoyed by the by, the yeah. neighborhood watch is annoyed by that specific thing not by yeah. the overarching you know whatever we'll get to we'll get to in a yeah, minute it's, in a minute it's it's funny it's yeah it's funny. <laughs> and of course uh it's very hard to show this on youtube but yeah so basically a, a giant bit of um it's not a it's not a parapet it's, what is that technically called a steeple steeple yeah i guess it would be a, a steeple, steeple. it but basically it's, it's gets one of the people it's broke gets pushed off by the killer broken off gets down and shoots him right in the head uh which and, is uh, <laughs> his body fumbles around a little bit unfortunately yeah. this did not age so well and the blood the cgi blood is really it's, clear it's not it's practical but the blood is not red it is maroon-ish and it's very cartoonish. Oh, no, in the well. in the latter shots, when the body falls down, the one that flies up is CGI because you can actually see it. Okay, I I, yeah. I didn't know that. It looked practical to me because yeah, the head when, when I, the body is moving no, around, no, no. the yeah, blood around the that is practical. When the head, when uh, you see like a close up of the head getting hit without the body, the head explodes before the steeple actually touches. That it. was the head was practical. I'm talking about the after effects when the body falls down, okay. just the okay. the after effects. Yeah. <laughs> so of course it's deemed an accident, and of course because uh, Nicholas is uh, being a busybody, he gets the detail of actually guarding the scene instead of actually investigating the scene. Right. Well, because because he tells the captain that hey. Um, you this is actually a murder scene so yeah. the captain takes him seriously and you can see how immediately what you think at the time is him actually doing his job where he snaps to and goes oh so okay so you actually believe this is a homicide yes i do so then he snaps into work and gives everyone actual 
real yeah, actual work. real work, <laughs> work. isolate uh, yeah isolating the in the incident and of course somebody has to guard so nobody yeah. gets close so of course it's nicholas yeah. because we know uh, why. So uh, oddly enough saf it actually wasn't supposed to be a comedy or a parody it was supposed to be an homage and it's supposed to be like the uk version of uh, a real like hard-boiled kind of like cop action film it i the think UK. it's yeah and i think the uk I think we discussed it at the start. It's more of a mm -hmm. body cop movie, American yep. body cop movie, but done in a very, very British way. Correct. Yeah. With and that was British the whole humor. Point of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. British humor, British dark humor as well. Mm -hmm. And a little yep. bit of levity when it comes to comedy. And it's, it's comedic. This movie is very, yep. very comedic yep. uh, at the end of the day, but it tries, it's sort of like tries not to be <laughs> right. It sort of tries not to be, but it is. Um. Uh, what's next? What's next? Uh, yeah, Danny's birthday. Uh, Danny's birthday. So, uh, Nicholas is very frustrated because he there's all there's already three. He thinks it's three murders. By now, it's three murders, and all he does is run around with Danny doing remedial work, doing this shit. You know trying to get that swan but he and he tries to figure out figure out what tim messenger was trying to tell him because he already told him look this town is not as it seems something's off i can't really discuss it here let's meet at the back and he doesn't get to meet him so there's a looming there's an alarm going off in nicholas's head right but of course all the only person who can confide with him is Danny. And that's about it. And Danny's sort of the only guy who believes in him, but he still tells him, look, I, you have to switch off sometime. This let other people do this. Right. Well, and then also everyone around him, including Danny at certain points is constantly like, well, maybe it was just some unfortunate accidents. Sometimes yeah. these things just happen. Sometimes, like you just kind of have to let it go. Exactly. So Nicholas kind of maybe about to give up. And then he goes to the florist. Okay. So he gets to the florist to uh, the the proposition. Why is it? Does he go to the florist? Because he everybody didn't know comes it was in. Actually... Everybody yeah. comes in with a birthday cake for Danny, and he's like, "Oh shit! Why didn't you tell me? I'll be right back. I'm taking a personal." Or something like that, and he goes to the florist to get, to, Danny, yeah, uh, to get Danny. Yeah, to get Danny his uh, Japanese peace lily. peace lily. Yeah, exactly. So he goes to the florist, and the florist it was like, uh, "I'm yeah, it's a good thing you come, you came over well, as you did because I'm well, leaving." Nick, no, Nick, Nick sees the going out of business sign, yes. and everything must go. He's like, "Well, what are you doing?" Well, well, what I found out was that um, well, I was talking to that previous the uh, refrigerator magnet who offered me yeah. a bunch of money for my for my land and i didn't realize what it was and my cousin sissy said don't sell don't sell don't sell and then mess tim messenger told yeah. me told that me that he found out that what they want to do is they want to build a whole like a uh, bypass through here yeah the highway and, and to accompany it a big shopping mall shopping, to go with it hilarious. so my land would be worth way much more money so i talked to someone from the city and i'm gonna sell it and yeah. and then and uh what she, she says like and then i don't care what cousin sissy thinks cousin sissy can go F F and, and cut to that's when he he walks out yeah he just walks out because he heard all the information that kind of fits to the theory he was building in his head mm -hmm. and he just leaves her alone to go and basically go and talk to Danny. Right. But then she gets murdered in front of his face and Nicholas sees the hooded figure and he gives chase, of course. And of course uh, we've already seen that uh, Nicholas can run his ass off because he's in shape. Uh, he, he was running at the beginning of the movie. He was running in the middle, trying to chase down the, the perp, the, the guy who was shoplifting. So we know he can run and he still can't get the killer. But the killer gets uh, uh, a cut on his leg 
during the during the whole yep. chase, and uh, that kind of gives Nicholas an idea of well, if I can find the killer, I can. And it I, goes back I know to it. that yeah. big whole red herring of of Skin- what they've yeah. all been trying to point at is Simon Skinner. Yeah, so he gets to the station and takes the inspector and they go off to Mr. Skinner's office. And we get this scene. And of course, Skinner kind of uh, mentioned that uh, his assistant, uh, just a, a side note that doesn't really belong there. His assistant goes and has... Uh, a, a different everybody in his shop has a different job. Well, as it's well. the 21st century, Sergeant. Yeah. Everyone has a second job. So he pointed out that his employees drove the the tow truck to bring the the car, and that kind of fits that theory, uh, and so on and so forth. And he says, "Well, my assistant works at as a table it's also dancer. a table dancer." <laughs> yeah, and the two Andrews are like. Mm like this Mm -hmm. and of course the whole basically the whole police station is there that's everybody right including that's the entire the inspector yeah Yeah, so i'm just gonna do this for dmca purposes (laughs) and he basically goes through the entire um litany of allegations against him and it's all based on the premise of it was all done for the money it was all yeah. done for the land because they find out that cousin Sissy, the flower shop's cousin, was is Simon, Skinner. Is yeah. Simon Skinner because he was a he did ballet when he was a kid. Yeah. And uh, he murdered the lawyer because the lawyer was doing uh, was in cahoots with the rich dude yeah. and, and the rich dude was trying to buy the, other people yeah uh, other people and mm-hmm. the, the the connection to the mistress is she's working at the uh the office land register. the land registers so that's can that's connected to that and that connects to that and of course he we get we get to see uh shots of skinner reacting you know to to people kind of takes us to scenes that we already seen and some of them yeah. are a little bit made up. So the uh, Nicholas with the newspaper is a little bit made up, but we, we know where it comes from. Yep. We have, we actually see Skinner look at Tim messenger and the florist talking again, comes from the ca- carnival and all that comes together in t- into this whole big theory of what is going on with this town. And this is like the, he took a bite of the red header herring basically. Yeah. Right. So I just want to get to the point and, what, and the evidence, the evidence. He goes, well, and you, but you have no evidence. He goes, well, yeah. yeah, but yes, I do. And then he pulls up his, the, the cuffs of his pants and there's no cut there. By the way, do you know what the, the things that pulling his socks is? It's super British. I've seen it only in like the in like British films and and series. I do I've not never know s- what the proper name of them are. <laughs> it's basically like suspenders for your socks. socks. Yes, I, I'm I'm aware of that, but there is an actual name for them. There's an actual name. I don't know what the name is. It is super <laughs> weird. It is super British. Uh, I think it's garters, but garters is t- Gar- for yeah. I was gonna say garters. Yeah, garters are for stuff. But this is for strictly for men. Yeah. But I, maybe I don't know. But then um, so then he basically uh, what Simon Skinner tells him. Well, here here's all my alibi, and he gives him all of the footage and lets him yeah. sit in the back room and review all of the footage of that day where he's walking around. Yeah, he's walking around in his store talking to that person and that person and that person. person. So he has a perfect alibi where he was at the store the entire time. Yeah. So So we get to this scene where, like I said, they're sitting in the car. Do you want something from the shop? It's like, get me a Cornetto. Give me a Cornetto. Yeah. Yeah. And they eat a Cornetto. And Danny says to... uh, to Nicholas, uh, and Nicholas has like sort of an epiphany, and Danny yeah. asks him, "Wait, is that a is that brain a freeze? Brain freeze? No, it's a, yeah. a brain wave." <laughs> and uh, and he tells, him, "Well, we need to go." And Danny's like, yeah. "Okay," and he eats a big chunk. He's like, "Oh!" Ah! Man. 
<laughs> well, the big the big epiphany was the the convenience store clerk says, "Oh, did you catch them killers?" Then, yeah. And Danny says, "Oh, well, it was only one killer." Yeah. It's and only that's one. what yeah. got him going. Like, well, killers, there could be more. So yeah. that would make sense why Skinner didn't have the cut on his ankle. Exactly. So he goes to the inspector, and the inspector says, "Look, just relax. It's your your your." It happened to the, your the the guy you replaced. Basically, he they they talk about the the, the guy who with who, a great big bushy beard. <laughs> yes, uh, the guy who who replaced who was he, he he didn't fit in, and he obviously at some point he kind of uh, was crazy and he left. Um, and it comes back a little bit later, of course. And uh, the inspector says, "Look, I've seen this happen. Just relax. Just don't think too much. Just let it let it go. Uh, there's nothing going on here." And Nicholas is at his wits' end. Wits basically, end. Mm -hmm. he is basically at his wits' end. Everybody's not believing him. He feels like, well. Everybody was already against me. I kind of proved that I know what's going on, but nobody yeah. listens to me. So yep. I'm just going to. And you see shots of him. He's not even walking with Danny anymore. He's walking alone. He's walking everywhere. Mm -hmm. See somber music as well. And of course, he gets to his room. And what happens? He gets attacked by the killer. And he resists. Yarp. And, and he finds out. When, found out it is. Lurch. The hound, and he literally it, it, he tells him, "Oh, it, it's playtime's over," and he gives him that big stuffed animal. Oh, with, that the, he, with the monkey, he, yeah, yeah. He wants playtime's over. Yeah, he give, he gives him the monkey, and the monkey is like, and, and he's like, Rrr. and of course that helps Nicholas to overpower Lurch, and uh, he runs to the station and tries to tell. Tell him off. And Danny's like, I don't believe you. And Nicholas is very frustrated. Oh, he, he didn't go, he doesn't go to the station, goes to Danny's place, and Danny just, just doesn't believe him. He tells him again, you have to turn off your head. It's just not, it's not happening. So Nicholas is frustrated with Danny also, and he goes to the big castle to the the meeting he knows about the meeting for some reason i don't know how i don't remember how but he goes to the meeting and he finds because, out uh, it was actually at the orientation he had an he got an invitation to join oh them. okay 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 yeah so he goes to the uh meeting and everybody's there all the nwa and of course everybody's there is hooded like the killer but that Fucking acronym! I swear to God, it, it's gonna make me chuckle every time. What the NWO? The, the, no, it's because it's the NWA. It's like, but the this NWA. is the polar opposite of the NWA. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. And they're, they're, anyway, again, they're all wearing robes, so again, they all look like they could be the potential killer. Exactly. They're all well. You find out they're all culpable because they're all yeah. part of this one grand scheme to keep the and. And this is this going is, in this pristine state that they perceive it to be. And this is we you get our first exposition that I kind of mm -hmm. tells you what's going on. Our, yeah. Basically, our, our our big exposition because they actually tell you, well, you think it's the red herring, and you keep thinking it is because everything seems obvious, right? It's sort of a solved detective story. We just need the the button on it Definitely. but he finds out it's not really it the whole point of the town is to keep keep sanford the best village ever well they because they want to have it keep winning the best village in england yeah. award every year that's what they want yeah. and that's their only goal and when you fight like they go through the whole reasons of why they killed all of the people yeah. and it's all for these outrageously superfluous reasons that yeah. make absolutely no fucking sense in the grand scheme of things. So, yeah. so like, for like 
so for the Tim, the lawyer. yeah Tim Messenger Tim Messenger was uh, was killed because he okay. uh, derailed the paper because of his misspelling Spelling. right and also he was he's also he was doing um uh, pop journalism and tabloid journalism yeah, yeah tabloid like. journalism yeah that's uh, why they killed him not because they were he was revealing some kind of secret truth they exactly. killed the millionaire not because of the fact that he was buying up property and he was going to eventually like redevelop the whole area no they just didn't like his big garish mansion there because it didn't fit with our old town antiquated aesthetic like yeah they that's... killed off they killed off the mistress because she had a very annoying, very laugh. annoying laugh yeah that's, that's why they it. killed her and they killed the lawyer <laughs> because uh because he defamed shakespeare basically Fair. Yeah, yeah it, it was just a bad actor. That's it. So that's why, like, every logical reason of why you could commit these crimes was utterly subverted, and that's why I love this movie so much. Because, yeah. like, there is no way you'd kill someone for that stupid of a re. Oh, yeah. And do you know what it was all about? The greater, the greater good. good. The greater good. <laughs> the greater good, man. Don't about the greater good. <laughs> yeah. So we also have a another reveal where, of course, Skinner is a part of it because mm -hmm. he's a part of it. But also the chief inspector, inspector. Is, a part, or is a part of it. And he's not only a part of it, he's the leader. Yeah, he's the ringleader of it, right? And, of course uh nicholas is like oh no it's it's everybody and he tries to get away and of course who grabs him to danny. danny and now we've got a like a double entendre right a subver a subversion of expectation where we expect danny to be his friend but actually he is not oh no he's a part of this oh and a, a, a slight call back real quick uh the last conversation that danny and nick had before that that's when danny puts the 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 notepad notebook, in yeah. his pocket so exactly. that's 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 really important here and yeah, also really... like we didn't go over the joke that danny did before so yeah joke was, they were, hey you want to see something funny so you grab yeah. a, a ketchup uh, packet and then he put it toward his eye and then he just stab it with a fork and go ah my eye my eye yeah yeah that's something that kind of we kind of skipped but it, it one of those uh in one of those pub crawls where they went to the pub and had a little bit to drink in one of those getting to know you things. So a little bit to know about Danny, a little bit to know about Nicholas is where he does that little thing with the ketchup, which comes in, uh, come into play right now. Right. So uh, they try to corner Nicholas. Nicholas kind of falls into these catacombs and he finds out, all the different bodies so he finds out about the gypsies because, who got killed he found they, out they, about the um uh is it popperwell the the guy with the great big bushy beard who was beard. Or well that that um, just real quick um during that big scene with uh the entire nwa yeah <laughs> they mentioned the fact that they've been doing this for a long time yeah, and they mentioned like crusty jugglers, <laughs> yeah. and they mentioned the fact that it all got started because the captain's wife died in a traffic accident. Yeah, yeah, which I gets know. brought up later to be false. Um, yeah, but she only cared about winning the village of the year. And that's yeah. what drove him to do all of this. That was the impetus yeah. behind all of this. Uh, but so when they had all these random, you know, hoodlums and crusty jugglers <laughs> move yeah, in. Yeah, but the th the thing is, uh, everybody who was in interaction with uh, with Nicholas Russ, gets gets it's all down. Yeah, so yeah. all down so there, there are all those the, the dead kids. The he, the kids that he pushed out of the uh, pub. Up. got whacked uh the shoplifter got whacked. whacked the um the uh walder Frey gets whacked yep and of course the menace to society Ready. it's perfect oh my god it's such a bit of brilliance 
just like the most subtle comedic one shot is right there. Yeah. You and get it's, it? Because he's a living statue. And oh. he's there for an absolute second. He was absolutely one second on screen, and that's it. And it's just oh, and it's just, just to wow. tie Steps tie a little bow tie a little bow on that little you know uh, uh, setup and payoff. Absolutely oh, great. It's absolutely great. It's one of the one amazing. of the things that actually it's those small things in this movie that you were like, oh yeah, yeah. That kind of makes absolutely. it because you have these oh yeah moment oh yeah moments throughout the film, and it is absolutely brilliant absolutely brilliant so um so danny catch him danny stabs him and of course uh takes him off he, he tells his dad i'm going to take him off to the station puts him in the trunk and of course we see him drive and then stop open up the trunk and of course release nicholas well the funny and, thing is when he pops on the hood he goes ta da yeah <laughs> that was supposed to be the big reveal to the audience because when they did the pan down to Simon Pegg, he has his eyes wide open where he looks like he's a corpse. Yeah. That didn't, sh they didn't shut his eyes yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes into the shop and he gets inspired. Yep. And by the way, Steven Seagal, this this is uh, one of S Steven Seagal's first movies. One of the only two that are worth the damn, by the way. Oh, God. Uh, which one was that? It's uh, yeah. uh, uh, Something Justice. Hard I don't Justice? Remember. Yeah, something like that. Hard Justice. Yeah. One of the two movies where he breaks <laughs> breaks faces. That the, One of the... Uh, it's, Oh. Yes. As an action 80s action movie, it is absolutely good. <laughs> What's funny is the fact they you know how they do the the callback to how they both they watch both Point Break and Bad Boys 2? Yeah. There's going to be a callback to that at the end and when we get to it, I have a fun note for you on okay. that. So. so Nicholas is like going to hard mode again. Everything ramps up. Everything ramps up. The, the going to Skinner and then being attacked by Lurch and going to the the NWA. And the giant and, big reveal. And, and, and the yeah. giant big reveal and blah, blah, blah. And now everything is high pace, high pace. So Nicholas is going, taking to um, uh, going to the evidence room and taking all the guns. And when he's like stepping out, I'm going to try and show it maybe yeah uh because it was the nicer of the twins that goes oh uh by the way uh sergeant frost sorry bad don't sergeant angel uh someone from london rang you again and he has all the guns on him yeah he goes, i'll tell him you will you'll ring them back and yeah. he looks looks back at his twin brother and he goes I didn't know he had a mounted division because he actually he rode in literally he, on a white horse. Yeah, he would. He, he literally, literally after this, he's on a white horse, horse. which goes, is. Well, I didn't know he had a mountain division, and the one the snarky twin goes, well, "Nobody tells me nothing." <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, he has a toothpick in his mouth, and I thought it, it should have been a match like Cobra. Yeah, that would have been good. That, would have, that would have been way better, but uh, yeah. you know, Cobra is not a good movie. <laughs> it's not a good movie. No, no. That also, that movie. would be like that would be an obscure reference in a movie that relishes in obscure references. But I think that would be even too obscure for this movie to reference. Exactly. So we go That'd be like them the... referencing Hudson Hawk. Oh, I <laughs> wish we could have gone to that. All right, so. Nicholas is how winding down the street, and I, I, I paused on this one because we didn't touch upon that. And one of the times where, uh, in one of the first times, they uh, Nicholas and Danny are sitting down in the um... yes, no, it wasn't. Good night. This is my Bye, to Mrs. Math. <laughs> anyway. Uh, 
Well, during multiple so, stakeouts, Nick, uh, Nick uh, first, Danny, Danny down. asks Nicholas about what's going on, and and Nicholas tells him everything is like suspicious. I mean, take a look at this guy, and Danny says, "I think it's Mister Treacher or or Preacher, something like that." He has a coat. Why is he having a coat? It's a very uh, warm day. He's not supposed to have this this oversized, like oversized coat what is he hiding under that coat and danny's like nah you're you're full of it you're like this and this is where the payoff comes in where as soon as danny he, he locks and load he open. opens he up the thing the he's got a, a sh big <laughs> shotgun and this is where the action is like insane going crazy 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 we've got a shootout everybody's got either and one of the andrews tells it during the orientation where everybody and their mother is packing heat right because every because everyone well around here all the farmers are packing heat and goes yeah and, and even their mothers like are their mothers packing heat too it's like yeah of course they are yeah it's like <laughs> uh so who's packing heat farmers and their mothers <laughs> something like that it's so stupid so everybody there is packing heat like some of them with shotguns and one of them with like a fucking sniper rifle yeah but, that it was the uh the lady from uh um, the, the lady from the shop where they the bought shop, the cornetto yeah. from which i find funny because it's it's not exactly easy to get a gun in the uk uh in certain places yeah but not a fucking sniper rifle no with a scope yeah. well th that they have th some of them have like a, a in one the of them country, actually has an assault shotgun though that's a problem it's an assault shotgun <laughs> yeah yeah i know it's a tactical shotgun it, it's not, it's not it, like a classic like double barrel where you just uh, pump in two shells one shot and then yeah so hurt. everybody everybody's there is packing heat um Nicholas is being pinned down, and of course Danny comes to the rescue, and he just like flings him a a, a, a like an assault shotgun. Is like, let's do this, right? Let, let's do this. Well, because uh, well, also just uh, in the interim there, um, Nick did recruit the kids because he picked yeah. up a bunch of pan cans of spray paint because you know the NWA haha, uh -huh. <laughs> had cameras all over town, so he had them spray paint all over all of the cameras, so they couldn't monitor what he was doing. So they were exactly. kind of blind and they were just speaking to themselves. Um, there was one little side joke in there. There was a callback from originally when um, Nick came into town. We're like, oh, did you see uh, Sergeant Angel? Check out his arse. Yeah. Now this time it's like Sergeant Angel's back and he's on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there's another thing where uh they are uh, him and danny are moving in and danny is like oh, oh did you say like a cool thing before you did like shoot and it's like oh, oh i forgot no, that was but but i remember it to that was uh, later yeah oh that's later okay yeah because that's that's before they um they end up getting everyone down in the center in the main square uh and shooting including the the doctor who they shoot in the foot when they, when yeah. they had that one callback. No, like, da You're Danny. Right. No, that is like. Uh, That's what Danny throws Nicholas, the shotgun. Nicholas gets, gets shot, goes yeah. down, and or gets grazed or something like that. And he goes goes down. Danny has his uh, weapon, but the doctor is like aiming at them. And, and he says, drop it. He drops the shotgun and it shoots the doctor in the foot. Sort of like what happened in the carnival. And that's how they get free from that. They go to the pub. They fight the, the two pub owners as well. There was the there was the one line. I love the fact that when the priest gets shot, he just, he just screams out "Jesus Christ" and falls. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, God damn you, good. Edgar Wright and Simon Pegg. Oh, you're yeah. brilliant. Oh, you're brilliant. So, and then um, they ask each other, "So, what are you thinking?" And uh, Danny goes, "Pub." Yeah, that's when they pub. go into the pub. They go into the pub. They jump and shoot with two guns as well, which harkens uh, they, back to what what Danny asked Nicholas if he has if he ever, ever done, done it. that before. They yeah. do the the one shot where um, Nicholas sh shoots the bullet that shoots the bear trap down that clamps on the bar owner's head, yeah. and then the bar matron. Um, 
<laughs> she pops up. She goes, won't anyone call the police? Yeah, and the police comes in. And we got an interaction between the inspector and everybody there with the riot yep. gear that had the dust on it. And he actually, con- I'm again trying to move forward. He actually yeah. convinces everybody so. that the accidents were not really accidents. And the, the mumbles, the mumble guy, like because yeah. the the police dog there is chomping at the bit to get at them because yeah. he's under like the rules to attack him. And he goes, "Oh well, you got to." I him her. He said, "Oh, you have a point there," and yeah. you. You can tell that Nick has changed because it was, yeah, I know. I understood him. And that's the yeah. dog calms down too. Yeah. They're like, well. sir, it's time for you to calm down. It, it, this is over. Let's, let's bring this to an end. He runs and away. Yeah. yeah. And it keeps going. They, uh, he, he runs away. This is the scene. Just, I want just to give you a glimpse. This is of course the scene where they uh, all talk. He convinced them and they move off. Of course, where to, if not to Skinner's uh, supermarket, where all all the employees are under his control and blah blah yeah. blah, right? And I love when Nick goes, "Hey, I'm gonna go in and check it out. I'll be right back. I'll let you know." Yeah. And all of them look to Danny. And go, are you sure he's got this? He goes, "Yeah, I'm sure he got, he's got this." And he yeah. crashes through the window the plate yeah. glass window he goes you guys get the rest i'll get the the trolley the trolley guy the guy yeah. who brings in all the the carts <laughs> this this part he goes move yeah. away and then immediately eject it out they're like what right. do you mean you'll get the trolley boy and then they realize it's lurch and they go oh okay <laughs> exactly so they start a gunfire with they start a gunfight with the with the two butchers Mm-hmm. And uh, Lurch and en- ends up in the freezer, and Nicholas goes to Danny and he says, oh, I've, 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 I've put him, what, I've what, put him you, in the did freezer." Tell him when it, like, did you put him on ice? Did or? you put him on ice? I was like, "Oh no, I forgot." But when he attacked me for the first time, I told him, uh, "It's playtime's over," and I threw the big monkey at him. And and Danny says, "Nice, <laughs> like, nice." <laughs> So that uh, then he goes. So what's the situation here? It's like, well, we got two guys behind bulletproof glass and a fuckload of cutter cutlery because they're just yeah. they're throwing knives at them. Yeah, exactly. And they keep <laughs> shooting at the the glass and nothing happens. Yeah. By the way, that is not a, a, a bulletproof glass. That is absolutely no. I know it is absolutely not the case. <laughs> you know, so it's they, written in there. So, so they take a bunch of disbelief here. They, yeah, they 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 take a bunch of carts and they literally uh battering ram them and destroy them. And of course, the assistant uh, assistant comes in, tries to attack him with a, a with a knife. And Doris takes a uh, uh, the placard, uh, the plaque, the slippery and the, wet, like yeah, the yeah, yeah the thing, the the thing, thing, and hits her with the face, knocks her to oblivion. It's like oh. A spot of uh, girl on girl, girl action. Girl eh? action, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's in on the joke, including Nicholas. Nicholas, yeah, yeah, including Nicholas. And they uh, literally go to the uh, go to the office. Skinner is. Uh, oh shit! What did I do? Never mind. Well, that was the that one of the last lines that Nick says to um, the Andes. Uh, the Andes says, "Hey, don't go out. There, don't go up there and get yourself killed." Yeah, and, and don't be a twat about it. And then um, the, the Nick goes, ah, I wouldn't dream of it. Exactly. That's because yeah. they wrote twat on his inside his, of his hat earlier on in that, the movie. Yeah. And they go and chase uh, Skinner and the inspector away. Mm-hmm. And of course, they nearly hit, hit the swan. Uh, and uh, the swan causes. Again, I love the fact that, that again, it's a callback without a callback in their own yeah. film. Exactly. And uh, we get an interaction that I cannot show everything, of course, because there's a very gory moment that YouTube does not like. Yes. And actually, so, uh, so during during that fight, there is that little boy, too. Little yeah, haired boy. Exactly. And you don't understand what he says. Cause, no. And well, th- when you find out his name, it was Aaron Aronson. And he goes, oh, so the Andes weren't fucking with me when they said like they were going to call Aaron yeah. A. Aronson. Exactly. That's so That's another callback within that, where it's the, this little tiny, tiny thing. <laughs> so Skinner attacks him with a box cutter. 
<laughs> and gets uh a gets flung into a building at this point uh and kind of when he recuperates he attacks him again and like trips and, and falls a yeah his steeple go, goes um, through his uh thing and he's still alive because it's what just i find jaw. so so how like what poetic justice that this is the way that that's his downfall is he's perpetrated and committed all these accidents and his own downfall is an actually accident. an accident <laughs> Look, because yep. he goes like, "Ow, oh, please help me. This hurts so much." And yeah. you know, he says one line. He goes, "I'm going to need a lot of ice cream." <laughs> yeah. uh, and of course, uh, the inspector uh, comes to. He threatens Danny. Uh, they discuss the mother. That's the 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 reveal where the the mother is kind of the catalyst to what happens. Yeah. Well, that no, and, the, the, they mentioned the fact that the mother was a cat before, but bef- no, they didn't mention now, it in this context. And context where this is where sort of like we learned about everything, but we didn't know that specific part where the the starting oh, point. Well, we didn't know the starting point of what happened. Yeah, and we also didn't know that she actually killed herself. Yes, too. yes, and it wasn't an accident. It wasn't an accident. She just killed yeah. herself, and. Uh, he runs away. He takes uh, he takes the police car of Danny and Nicholas well, no, that but, but saved no, the, big, the swan right before no, they put it in the car with them. The big thing in between there, though, is Danny has his point break moment. Yes, where he rushes the his gun dad, away yeah, and he tries runs away. Point, yeah. Ah! His dad, yeah, his dad runs away, but he can't really shoot at his dad, so he shoots at the air like point break. Yeah. But yeah, so no, but you're right. He gets in the car that Danny and Nick had, and while he's driving away, the swan pops up in the background, and so he he collides with a, a tree, a big tree, and that yeah. kind of that kind of gives it the end. We see uh, the moment where and every- you see where there's a slowdown, and then choppers come in. So right here now that now I can mention it. So so the big thing about the the point break scene that they not only show the scene. They reenact it, they do an homage to it, and they show the box art multiple times. Same yes. thing with Bad Boys 2, where that scene where um, Martin Lawrence says, well, shit just got real. That's the same thing with the when the helicopters are coming in. Yeah, same thing with part. the box art. And same thing when they watch the film. Nick Simon Pegg and Nick Frost actually went out. They talked to Martin Lawrence. They talked to Will Smith. They talked to all of the actors and directors. They talked to Keanu Reeves. They talked to, yes. Yes. The late and great Patrick Swayze got really? their permission to do this as an homage to these films before nice. they paid the rights to do the adaptation and show the actual scenes in the movie. I'm sure it didn't cost that much. I'm sure. Well, I'm. I think Bad Boys. The budget two for this was at the time. I don't think Bad the Boys budget was, for this was that big. I I I didn't actually check what the budget was on that one, but I I just know that they they actually did all the effort. They even talked to the people that coordinated the stunts. Wow! Really? To get their it's, approval it's, that it was okay to do it. It's an actual like less than ten seconds. Yeah, I know. Part. But all of it, like if the, everything, they yeah. th- it just shows how much they actually cared. Like they didn't want this to be again a spoof or a parody. They wanted this to be an an homage to those American style cop films, but for the UK audience with British humor involved. Exactly. So, so we get uh, an Edgar Wright transition where everybody's getting booked, same way the uh, the kids from the pub got booked as well. Everybody well, got, who is um, still they, alive get booked. They got the, the callback from the guys from London who were in the yeah. helicopter shed. And they're like, uh, by the way, we need you back because our numbers are fucking terrible since you left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. And he says, well, no. And no, uh, I'm needed here. And they're like, besides, I have a lot of paperwork to do. So that, that, that smash cut again, the egg cut, where they're all around that table and they're all 
doing paperwork. See, I know see- what, you, what you're getting at. And yeah. you have the callback to the trash can that was thrown at Danny's head gets thrown at Nicholas head and Nicholas has the same reaction. Oh, you fuckers. Fucker. Yeah. Yeah. What was also funny too, is that um, uh, when Danny comes in, they mentioned like, Oh, policeman. He goes, well, actually it's, it's officer. Yeah. Cause Danny is the one who's now like in the middle. And then Nick is the one who's also now he's making jokes. Of course. And, and Danny says it because Doris is the only woman there. That's there, why yeah. everybody has to be a police officer and not sure. a policeman. All that, uh, all that good stuff. That's, by the way, the PC I don't really mind. Uh, it's, it's, that's for me, it's bullshit. It's easy. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, and we get the, the, the liaison well, to the, uh, to the NWA. NWA that apparently had been up in that, room by himself the entire time with what appears to be a uh, period accurate fucking blunderbuss. Yes. Bex and Staff, he, you'll love this. It's like fucking Sea of Thieves all of a sudden. <laughs> exactly. So he shoots <laughs> Nicholas, but of course Danny takes the it takes the, the hit. Um Nicholas kind of chases the uh the old dude away and they go into he, the evidence he room. He knocks him into the evidence room. He, yeah, when- yeah, he knocks him into the evidence room and the yeah. he trips all over the mine and the mine kind of tips over. And one of the things that actually activate a, a C mine gets pressed. Yep. And everything blows up. And the up. building blows up. And that's where, like, right there, I'm like, okay, when the film was written. I have to imagine that's when they stopped writing the first round, like, and then everyone dies at the end. <laughs> Cause yes. that's what it actually, what would have happened? Cause everyone would be dead. <laughs> yes, I know. But because it's still a comedy and an get... action film, of course, yes. and more an importantly, action it's film. an action film. Of Everybody course, protagonists survive. A protagonist keep alive. And we've got the, Oh, Danny, stay with me, dude. Stay stay with don't, me. don't yeah. die. And we get, basically another ending yeah and this is where they could cut away to to uh to the credits but you know we still have more by the way we're at the two hour mark and we haven't done one segment but let's keep going well because we're we're right at the end we are right at the end yes Uh, they literally uh he there's there's a sort of a mislead scene, where you see the last name but you don't see the first name and it's only nick walking toward the grave the, yes the, and you think oh of, co- of course danny died because he died. took bullets yeah. for him but it's it's the grave danny's of danny's mom. mother mm-hmm. they give her flowers and they go into their car of course dispatch comes in something happens and uh they go they put on their sunglasses and let's rock and roll baby. And they literally Uh, have, they're driving a, a, that's a Subaru WRX, by the way, that's a rally sport WRX. (laughs) Exactly. And it, and it literally had the, the sports, uh, the, the sports gear shift and the sports pedals as well. Oh yeah. The clutch, the the clutch pedals and the, the thing it's everything you can modify to have it like this, like the rally car. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the wheels, the everything, right? Yeah. And they spring into action, and the movie's over. And hot fuzz. That's hot fuzz. Yeah, yeah. That's hot fuzz. Uh, so we're gonna skip out on the other segment tonight because we really wanted to like be on point with this. Um, last impressions. Ah, <sighs> my favorite of the Cornetto trilogy still stands up to this day. Um, I had a blast watching it three times this week. Uh, yeah. Every single time, I enjoyed it. Laughed at, at something new every time. Like, oh, that little side caveat joke. Oh, this little little subtle line calls back to something that was 45 minutes ago that I really had forgotten about the first time I watched it. And the yeah. second time I watched it. It's, it's such a great movie. Yeah, I know. I mean, I... I think uh, the first time I watched this movie was again on cable. I haven't watched this in the cinema at all. Uh, wasn't even in my radar. I do enjoy the occasional British film. 
Um, but usually I have to wait until it's actually on cable or somewhere to watch it. I don't really follow and like anything. Uh, one of the movies that later on Nick Frost and Simon Pegg did was Paul. Yeah. The Paul. alien mm -hmm. that I, I knew it would come out and didn't watch it in the cinema, watched it at, it wasn't, it wasn't at home and it wasn't really good. It's, it seemed to me that it was trying to capture the chemistry between uh, Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, but yeah, it didn't have that Edgar Wright magic. I'll just no, it did way. not. And even at world's end, there's uh, yeah. signs of, you could have done better. And uh, like you went super crazy. You could have be a little bit more grounded, but again, it can't be every, everything cannot be hot fuzz. Yeah. Hot fuzz was very, very good. It's like, uh, or even Shaun of the Dead. I mean, because, like, granted, yeah. like, Shaun of the Dead is no slouch either. Shaun of the Dead is a great movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Shaun of the Dead is really, really good. It really, really good. Um, but yeah, for me, it's, uh, it's all about the, it's not just Simon Pegg and Nick Frost, it's all about the writing and the editing for this it like it, it tightens up the movie even though it's a two-hour movie you don't realize it's it's been two hours you do not Definitely. realize the the like up to the point where the actual movie starts that's a half an hour of a movie that sets up a lot of like minor callbacks at the end and i i think you nailed it on the head there this is a movie that's a two hour film that feels like it is a solid 80. Yeah, for sure. It feels like, sure. like, Oh yeah, I, I had a good, Oh wow. It's been two hours. I had no idea. And that yeah. is, that's a sign of a really great film. Something that, that can bring you in and bring you into that storytelling that you get enraptured by it. And before you know it, two hours have passed. Exactly. Exactly. So. All right. So yeah. to close off this uh, little podcast, I was going to say, Saf did ask. We did not well, do the movie. No, we haven't done. I, I said, do you, do you want to do it now? We'll do a fast one. Yeah, we should do a fast one. Come on. Come on. We, we, we got right, Saf right. and Dex in the chat. So all come right. on. <laughs> Here we go. So uh, just before we uh, we end up, th this segment is something that we do every single time is we take two movies and we pit them together and see which one is the better one. At the end of the day, Friday night, uh, Saturday night, watch a movie with your main squeeze or your main guy or your main girl, whatever your uh, your affiliation is, doesn't really matter. Sit down with the boys, watch a movie. Which movie do you want to watch? Star Trek, the J.J. Abrams uh, renewal or... Curious case of Benjamin Button. For me, even though it's a long ass dragging crying movie, I'm going to say Benjamin Button. So am I. It's a way better film. It's a way better film. Mm -hmm. Hands down. Oh, perfect. Almost perfect. Blair Witch Project Ooh. or Bad Boys? That's, I'm going to go. It's gonna... very odd because um, oddly enough, Bad Boys is the only film that I know of that actually features one of my favorite industrial bands from the, I would say, late 80s to present. Which Kai is? Mirheit für die Mitleid, KMFDM. Juke <sighs> Joint Jezebel is prominently featured in Bad Boys. Uh, I think the Blair, Blair Witch Project, though, is a little bit more important because it started the whole shaky cam, self cam. Yeah. I know the importance of it. I just don't like it. Yeah, I would again. I would also rather watch Bad Boys yeah. <laughs> too. On, again, on a Friday night. Heat oh, or Minority Report. Heat. Yeah. Heat is so good. Oh heat man, if you good. have not seen, heat, I, have, I haven't. Heat. I haven't. I haven't watched it in a very long time. Okay, so Devil Wells Prada, which I've seen with my wife today. <laughs> don't it's ask not me a, why. It's not a bad movie. It's not. It's not. It's not, but but compare it to Beverly Hills Cop. Cop. Come on, yeah, come on. Oh, perfect, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> Bad Boys Two or Home Alone. 
sadly, Home Alone, even though Bad Boys 2 has a scene in it that when I saw it for the first and second time, I was pissing myself laughing. Mm -hmm. It's where they go and chase down the Hades into their house. Yeah. And there's an interaction between Will Smith and the Hades and Martin Lawrence and the Hades after they're killed. (laughs) I'm still laughing about it. But Home Alone for me. I do have to give it to Home Alone. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It's also a big part of my childhood. So, (laughs) mine too. Mine too. Hellboy or The Hobbit? Oh my God. So, which is the bigger piece of shit? Which one is the bigger piece of shit? I would have to say uh, all the Hobbit movies are fucking god awful. So, I'm going to have to go with Hellboy. I'm going to go with Hellboy too. Oh, there's no competition. Oh, being John Malkovich. Oh. There's no. By the way, the only Andy Kaufman, not Andy Kaufman, Charlie Kaufman movie I can stand. Oh, but have you finished I'm Thinking of Anythings yet? I have not. Because that's I a Charlie not. Kaufman movie. I know. <laughs> oh, man. I love both these. But I can't I... believe this is just too good. We talked about this. Yeah. I just said about speed. Ah, man. I have to say. Which of the which of the films are more important to launching a, an actor's career? I have to give it honestly from *Dust Till Dawn*. Do you know why? Really? You know why? It's so bad. And that though. only launched a director, Robert Rodriguez. Yes. It also launched George Clooney. And uh, Miss Tits herself. Well, Selma Hayek, but. She hasn't really done too much. I, I'm, I, to be honest, I'm being voted out. Well, yeah. Of this. Well, actually, Sap is right too. Danny Trejo was in that. Danny Trejo was that Trejo too, was but it's not his first, not the first movie he was in in a, in a crucial role. Yes. But okay, yeah, I get it. Life of Brian or Taken? Solid choices. Oh we man, we got solid choices. Today. I love both of these. Always look at the bright side of life. Yes, uh, I'm gonna go with Life of Brian. Because oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Taken because it reinvigorated Liam Neeson's career because it was oh yeah in a time. big bad way in a big so bad way. Saf Saf is uh, <laughs> being the only viewer. I think Bex Don't left a while Bex ago, is. but <laughs> yeah, she left a while ago. Saf says Taken. All right. I'm going to go with the audience. All right. Last one. Perfect. Fuck you. Fuck you. Oh, my Perfect. God. This is why this is why this site it can be like really dumb or like tremendously it's, difficult. Yeah. Original Blade and Stand By Me. Original Blade was the first successful Marvel's character, a comic book character adaptation mo- adaptation movie, regardless if you knew who Blade is or yeah. whatever. This is the best one. And also, if, if it were not for Blade, we would not have the MCU full stop. We wouldn't have had the X-Men either. Yes, we wouldn't have the X-Men if it weren't for Blade, for yeah. a fact. Okay. But stand by stand me. By me is stand by me such a is great movie though. A movie with four characters, four characters that were absolutely they were all pinned as the next, next. best thing. None of them worked out. Walking Phoenix, wrong. None of them worked out. Walking Phoenix died too soon, man. How many movies no, you did? You're talking about River Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix was also in that movie. Okay. And And so is Kiefer Sutherland. I mean, from the four boys who did this movie. Yeah, I know. From the four boys who... uh, Because it was... They uh, were the titular role in this. Yeah. So River Phoenix, River Phoenix, uh, Jerry McConnell, um, Will Wheaton, and uh, the guy with the glasses uh, who went super crazy. Yeah. Uh, friends with with uh, Corey Haim, Corey something. Oh, Feldman. It's the yeah, two Corey. Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman. Corey Feldman. Yeah. So of the four guys, 
for kids, none of them worked out as a successful never made it superstar. Like never, huge. never, never went out, and they were all pinned. They were all I would pinned say, for it. Okay, on the credence of it being a better film, stand by me. Yes. On the credence of its importance and enjoyability, is it like if I want to watch a movie on a, again on a Friday on after, a Friday on a Friday evening, evening, I'd watch Blade all day long. I would say, yeah, I would say Blade uh, and Saf says Blade as well. Yeah. I really love Stand By Me. I really hope we one day, we, I think both of them are candidates for a podcast, to be honest. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I would love so to. I love, we're gonna go I with, talk forever about, uh, yeah, Deacon Frost and La Magra, the, the yeah. villains in Blade. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I know all the comic shit. <laughs> I don't know the, the comic shit. I don't know the comic shit, but for me in the movie it was ridiculous yeah yeah it was ridiculous because i do come from the world where i appreciate vampires like the original vampires and I, it didn't very, work for me but i didn't know blade i well i didn't know blade also was was like, so you're, you're telling me these motherfuckers can just put sunblock on and then all their problems are solved because yeah. that's how they did it in two scenes in that movie exactly exactly <laughs> It's like, okay, well, this is fucking dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. All right. So at the uh, usually we do this at like a midway through, uh, yeah. and we end with the last segment where I take this movie, the movie we're uh discussing, Hot Fuzz, and we do a short, short version. So uh before we start, uh hope hopefully it'll be this. No, no, no. Hopefully it'll be this. No setup, just uh, hopefully we can enjoy this both. Hopefully you can hear the sound. Okay, well. here we go. The short, short version. Of nope. course, I fucked You're it up. You're making us look bad. You are married to your job. Hag, another cranberry juice? Do you really want to process all these lot? I see you met my boy, the living statue menace. What's it like being stabbed? It's the single most painful experience of my life. What's the second most painful? The NWA, brother. Mr. P.I. <laughs> Staker, Mr. Piss Taker. Your mothers. Never taken a shortcut before? Love me, love me. Hopefully that's the last we'll see of him. Decaffeinated? I trust you have a license for this firearm. I do for this one. By the power of Skull. I think someone needs to go home. If you didn't see anything suspicious, then who did? Cathedral head. Cousin Sissy can go f Brain freeze? No. Brain wave. Playtime's over. The greater good. He's not Judge Judy and Executioner. Still thinking you're missing out? Nothing like a bit of girl on girl action. Swan! Swan! Point break ending? Oh god no. Bring the noise. I fucked it up royally, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Uh, we didn't miss anything, so okay. So, so, Mr. Friend, what is up for us next week? Do you remember? It's going to be a fun one. I've lost the thread. Get to the choppa. Oh, next yes. Next week. Next week, we are watching Predator. <laughs> Uh, oh, by the way, if you notice what, what color am I using, it's on purpose. Uh, go like this. The meme. The meme. Uh. All right. So it's the 1987 Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm a sexual Tyrannosaurus. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll save it for then. Uh, oh, tune. Tune, uh, tune to us next week when we uh, talk about all about Predator and try to keep it under two hours, maybe. Yeah. Uh, uh, go watch it. It's uh, you can grab it on Amazon. You can grab it on Hulu. I checked. Uh, you can grab it anywhere. You can just rent a DVD. Rent. Get a DVD on a, like the <laughs> the one dollar bucket at your fucking local Target. You can go ahead and do that and. Watch it before you watch the podcast and then come back and discuss it with us. Like on this video, subscribe to the channel for more content. I'm trying my absolute best 
to give uh, to put on reaction videos to the movie that we're going to discuss. Uh, that is uh, hopefully, hopefully something that I can accomplish on this uh, channel, but I'm, I'm very limited in time. Uh, uh, but that's something I want to happen. Mm -hmm. And of course, the short, short version to Hot Fuzz will be live as soon as I get off this podcast. Actually yep. write some tags and all that shit. But next week, Saturday, live, uh, 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific. Uh, and of course, uh, 8, uh, 8 p.m. UK as well. Uh, if you're watching on the EU side, oh, also, uh, real quick call. Hey, Danny. Yeah. Hey, Danny. That's a, that's a platform. <laughs> yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you, Danny. And thank you for joining us. Uh, if you missed it, go back, watch it. We'll, uh, we'll, it'll still be here. All right. So, uh, next week, uh, I bid you farewell for me, Mephisto and from all my feelings, Hopefully you enjoy this and uh, I'll see you around.